Eric Tolf, 7 8 months, Stephen Bingham, watching Israeli News Live. We have a whirlwind of information to discuss with you over here over the next maybe 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and one of the first articles that I want to bring to your attention, and these, by the way, these articles that I'm speaking about this evening, you will be able to find on Israeli News Live, our Facebook page as well. We try to put them there. Uh, this comes from Red Flag. Uh, I want to I think a brother there on uh, Facebook who sent me this particular article. It's very interesting and very enlightening. Uh, the title of the article is called Alert, Russia Prepares a Large-Scale Invasion, Battle-Ready Force on Infantry, Armor, Artillery, and Air Defense. And that is, by the way, on Ukraine's border. Um, it seems that uh, President Vladimir Putin has probably had just about enough of the Vatican's NATO forces uh, continually intervening in Ukraine to the point where he is about to try to make a decision of what to do. The, 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 um, the economic sanctions that have been placed uh, at the leading of the United States that has been placed on Russia uh, very much against the will of the European people. In fact, that, that particular alliance with Europe was starting to unravel but then some accidents began to happen in Europe that seemed to change some of the leaders' minds over there. But it's not changed all the minds of the leader. Even France, uh, they took and broke their promise and deal for the aircraft carrier for helicopters with Russia, uh, the mistrial there that did not go through. That was at the pressure of the United States, which is something they made very clear. And now, more recently, the uh, French uh, government there, some of the politicians in the Senate are going to visit Crimea in the very coming uh, month here, near the, uh, in, a, in another week or so, they're visiting uh, Crimea and Russia as well to assess the situation that is being told to them about Crimea. They want to speak to the citizens in Crimea, something that the foreign, uh, or the Prime Minister of France has been downplaying and very uh, upset, no, no, uh, to say the least, of what he has been reporting um, publicly about the senators meeting with the uh, the Russian officials in Crimea, as well as in Russia as well. Uh, we know that uh, uh, Merkel, uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel, she has also the German Chancellor there has been under a lot of pressure from the United States, whereas she has wanted sanctions to end with Russia and restore normal relationships with. President Putin. They are actually good friends, but again, this major push, the United States leading the way, or people seem to think the United States is leading the way. We have uh, very interesting prophetic uh, information from the book of uh, the Apocalypse of Thomas that says otherwise. It says that it's the Roman soldiers. So clearly, if NATO are the Roman soldiers that are fighting in the battle here at the end of the day that bankrupts many of the world's economies, uh, no doubt then that makes Rome or the Vatican in charge of these forces, much like it was 2,000 years ago when Titus the Roman general came and ransacked Jerusalem. Anyway, let's go back to this article here. Let me just start to give you a little bit of information from this. Again, the website is called Red Flag. Uh, you can find that at redflagnews.com. And it states here, they have an interesting picture here of the Russian tanks, huge amount of Russian tanks uh, headed to the border of Ukraine. It says here, a massive buildup of Ukraine border in the last 48 hours has seen Russian double, Russia double its troops levels with 17 additional battalions and has uh, left Western leaders trying to figure out what President Vladimir Putin is planning to do next. Well, you would think that's kind of obvious at this particular point, but I guess maybe not for them. They must believe that Putin will flinch. On Tuesday, the Russian president called for an emergency meeting for the United Nations Security Council to resolve the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine that has reportedly left tens of thousands of people displaced because of fighting over the last several months, a move that some in the West see as a prelude to Russian invasion of Ukraine. Quite frankly, it seems like President Putin doesn't have a whole lot of choice left. If you look at the demographics of Ukraine, the eastern part of Ukraine, just like Crimea, is the majority are Rus uh, ethnic Russians. Uh, they are people that, that um, very much were part of the, the motherland at one time. Uh, better than 90% of its uh, people, the populace there, are Russians, and there's been many intercepts of communications with military and phone calls as well between 
uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, embassy in Ukraine, stating that they just wanted to wipe out those people. In fact, they even used the expression just to annihilate them if it took a nuclear bomb to do so. And the uh, Minsk Accords have constantly been broken by the Kiev's uh, the Kiev's government there fighting in eastern Ukraine. The United States is training soldiers there. It has been caught on camera by the local news media there in eastern Ukraine with uh, American, uh, believed to be American soldiers only wearing uniforms of the Ukrainians fighting alongside with the Ukrainians. And of course, it's been reported that special ops from the U.S. has also been a part of the battles there. Uh, the, the Minsk agreement has been broken on just multiples and multiples of occasions on a daily basis in the Donsk region uh, and the Luhansk region as well. And uh, the people, the civilians, are targeted in these attacks. Many of them are. Many have been killed. Many have been displaced as a result of this. So you can only imagine how long will it be before Russia actually does something about it. Uh, it says here in the article, we are covering an emergency meeting in the United Nations Security Council on the humanitarian situation in Ukraine, Russian ambassador to the UN. Uh, Vitaly uh, Ch Cherkin was quoted as saying, Earlier on Tuesday, the Russian Foreign Ministry said the UN and the International Committee of the Red Cross expressed uh, readiness uh, to discuss its plan to deploy humanitarian missions to Ukraine, which some consider to be a pretext for an invasion by Russian forces. Uh, Russia has significantly built up its troop presence along the Ukrainian border in recent weeks, according to the U.S. officials making it ready for a potential large-scale invasion of southeastern Ukraine if Russian President Vladimir Putin so chooses. Uh, according to a report in the New York Times, Russia has nearly doubled its troops' presence along the border, uh, adding 17 battalions and 19 to 21,000 troops who now compose uh, a uh, battle-ready for uh, uh, battle-ready force of infantry, armor, artillery, and air defense within a few miles of the border. Uh, the White House is openly worried about what would be, for all intents and purposes, uh, uh, an invasion under the guise of the peacekeeping operation. Uh, we've seen significant uh, rebuild up of Russian forces along the border, potentially positioning Russia for a so-called humanitarian or peacekeeping intervention in Ukraine. Uh, Deputy National Security Advisor uh, Tony uh, Blinken said last week. That's a very real option, a senior Defense Department official said, uh, told, the, told the Times. And should Putin decide he could do that with little or no notice, we just don't know what he's thinking. And quite frankly, I do not believe that if Putin does uh, in, uh, come into eastern Ukraine, I do not believe that he will try to go far beyond that. I don't think he's interested in trying to take Kiev or any of the other places there unless the, 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 the war spreads with NATO uh, getting involved as well. It seems to me, just like it was in the case of Crimea, he is trying to secure the Russian-speaking people in eastern Ukraine. And we know we get a lot of flack sometimes from different uh, uh, other reporters that have also watched our news broadcast saying that we, quote, don't know the story. But we do know from both sides, we have seen both from Russia and the United States, the different, the different things that go on there. And we have clearly seen also the propaganda. And we realize that Russia, as well as the United States, does use propaganda to justify the means of their operations. But quite frankly, we have seen uh, the Obama administration uh, flat out lie to the American people, saying that there was not a buildup of troops or or heavy artillery in Eastern Europe, but yet, to the contrary, they very much well have done so and did it many months before President Barack Obama actually stated to the American people that he was sending in heavy equipment and artillery to Eastern Europe to uh, protect uh, the former Soviet states from Russian aggression. But it was just the opposite. The United States had already sent in the tanks and the equipment and the heavy artillery and everything, and then Russia responded by saying that they would actually build 40 more intercontinental ballistic missiles. So the question is, when we see physically on the ground what is happening, uh, it's very disheartening, and I think the American people should know this, especially with an election coming up in the not-so-distant future, that President Barack Obama is certainly uh, playing to whatever uh, strings are being pulled on him by the Vatican to do just the contrary. The United States needs a president in the next election that will not bow down to Pope Francis. 
Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that will happen, but that would certainly be the best thing to happen for the country. Uh, in other news, let me take you to uh, the events going on over the Iran, uh, the Iran, uh, the Iranian deal. Uh, it's something that is uh, very, very disheartening. And oh, and by the way, before I do that, let me just let you know as well. If you don't think that Russia isn't having a, a reason to also look at trying to secure the people of eastern Ukraine, uh, the the U.S. Uh, and, they, and the NATO allies have already been announcing plans to build a navy base build a navy base in Ukraine. And of course the Ukrainian government is very much open to that. That's reported on the European Union Times. Uh, and let me just quickly give you a little highlight on this article here. There's a video, you can check this out on Israeli News Live, our Facebook page there. It says NATO wants to help the Ukrainian Navy. On July 16th, members of the advisory group of the North Atlantic Alliance continued analyzing the prospect for building a training facility uh, for the naval forces of Ukraine in the city of Nikolaev. Yesterday, the delegation visited the frigate uh, Gitman uh, Dachny in Odessa. NATO experts discussed the development of a pilot project to restore the capacity of the Ukrainian Navy. Um, it says here that uh, uh, this was said by Viktor uh, Morkov, Morkov Koski the chief editor of the arsenal of the fatherland. For NATO, I think there is more attractive idea here. They want to build their own base on the coast of Ukraine rather than to restore the Ukrainian Navy. As of today, the Ukrainian Navy can hardly be referred to as such, he states, because they do not have even a second or third ranked ships, uh, let alone the first rank. In other words, they cannot control even the near sea zone, what they have in the uh, structure of their navy is boats. Their former training uh, ship, uh, the Shukandachny, uh, that's uh, pretty much it, and I really don't know how NATO expe uh, experts can help them, other, of course, other than actually building NATO's own uh, navy fleet there in uh, Ukraine. And so this could be another reason why Russia is also concerned with the growing presence uh, the, uh, the U.S.-led uh, NATO forces uh, bu building up more and more of a military presence on Russia's border. Uh, you might remember as well something that's very important to keep in mind, and that is that uh, when Jeb Bush was in Europe uh, here uh, a few weeks back there, he stated that the Russians are good people. Well, I have to agree with him. The Russian people are very good people. But he said the problem is, is the regime. They need a regime change. He said they should be a part of the European Union. That pretty much sums up his ambitions as well, much like the former George Bushes uh, that were presidents in, in the past. I guess it's conquer and destroy until you get the people to bow to your own demands. It's not going to happen that way with Russia, though. And that's something that... Uh, I think NATO is going to find out if they decide to keep pushing this, pushing the Russian bear to that, to that point there. We trust and pray that this will not take place and that both sides, uh, that President Putin will also reconsider that type of invasion, invasive, evasive action, but then again that NATO would also back down and allow the East Russian people in Ukraine to be Ukrainian citizens or have their own autonomy to be able to govern themselves. They don't want to be a part of what the Nazi regime in Kiev is actually wanting them to be a part of. Anyway, let's move on to the Iranian crisis. Uh, the Iranian nuclear uh, deal is called the Iranian nuclear crisis, according to Arut Shiva. And this is a very uh, alarming article that came out here. Not only is Israel in an uproar over this deal, but Saudi Arabia is skeptical uh, as Israel over an Iran deal. It says here that uh, Saudi Arabia is just as wary of the deal between Iran and the West as Israel is. Saudi state media indicated Wednesday after King, um, uh, King Solomon bin uh, Abu Duzalez expressed concerns over the Islamic Republic's terror regime and accountability in meeting with U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter. Uh, Carter uh, stressed the United States of America, key, America's keenness on enhancing peace uh, and stability in the region, the Saudi press stated Wednesday. During the meeting, 
Uh, Simon expressed doubt about the veracity of the checks and balances on the Iranian nuclear program and questioned the snapback sanctions program if, if Iran violated its terms. Uh, Carter told reporters, those are in the same issues that we know we all arise, he responded. Uh, uh, Riyadh backs Israel's view that the same deal will only empower Tehran and its terror, terror proxies. The Saudi-based Al Arabia's news uh, site reflected and is also convinced that Iran will be able to build a nuclear weapon regardless of the deal due to the, due to the lax terms imposed on the Islamic Republic, including ample warning before inspections and limited development of the selected warheads under laboratory conditions. Both are faults in the plan. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has stressed several times in various speeches as the deal has developed. Uh, the uh, the Judic's position is a rare acknowledgement of an agreement between Israel and Saudi Arabia which have no formal diplomatic uh, contact but have reportedly been growing more cooperative as the deal has progressed. Uh, after, a quite, uh, after a quiet meeting with Carter Tuesday, Netanyahu briefed briefly alluded to the re, uh, regional agreement over the poor quality of the deal during a press conference Wednesday with the Italian minister uh, Matteo Renzi. In Israel and in many countries in the Middle East, here is a broad uh, agreement in this bad agreement that must be opposed, he said. You know, speaking of Italy there, one of the things too I'd like to just mention to you, it's very some, becoming very interesting. In recent articles that have been coming out, uh, Pope Francis has been having meetings in Rome recently with uh, 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 mayors uh, from around different parts of the world that met with him there. He has set up a place there in Vatican City, much like you would think would be the, a United Nations Hall there, and he sits as the king of the head uh, dealing with this. The latest one was about climate change. But it's the format is what's kind of interesting to me. Here are political leaders from around the world meeting there in Rome, in Vatican City there, with Pope Francis. It once again shows who is the man that is controlling the world now? Who is actually leading in every direction? But you know, it's kind of interesting. My wife once mentioned to me about Daniel's vision about the, the, the legs and the feet. They're mixed with clay and iron. Of course, as we know, clay and iron doesn't mix very well. So it shows that the Roman power is not quite as strong as it once was 2,000 years ago. Although they are clearly trying to rule the world, is something that will crumble in the end, especially when the stone that is formed without hands comes down and smashes that the feet of that image. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Show